going on with you all? Thank you for tapping with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Cleveland. So welcome to the Fish Corner, everybody. Before we even get started on this video, do three things. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and smack the hell out that like button, y'all. Just get it done right now. All right, now, so let's get into the video. So this is another fish room tour. If you haven't caught the last video, about six days ago, I did a fish room tour of our other fish room. So, huh, gotta do another one today because we got two fish rooms. Now, I'm standing in front of two very large aquariums. Up top, we have the 225 gallon aquarium with a few inhabitants. We have in here two Orinoco peacock bass. Look at the big boy right there. Ooh, look at the big boy right there. Right next one, we have our albino silver arowana. Got him pushing two foot right now. Over here, we have our giant red tail garami. And then followed by our giant tiger oscar right here. Now, we have some catfish in here. We have a tire track eel. We have a pleco in here. But they're a bit on the smaller side. Matter of fact, look at the pleco. He's gotten big. Look at him. Okay, look at the pleco over here doing what he's supposed to do. So, that is this 225-gallon aquarium. Now, one thing that you might notice is how am I filtering this aquarium? By three large sponge filters. Yes, I said I'm filtering this extra-large aquarium with these extra-large fish with three sponge filters. Each sponge filter is rated for 125 gallons. I have three and uh, so far just keeping the water real clear. Water crystal clear. We are growing some potos up top but you can see the roots are constantly being eaten by the giant red tail garami. We have in here some extra large, heavy, real boulders. I like to use real media and decor inside of my aquariums. So we got the real boulders. We got the river rocks. We got the river pebbles. So all in all, it makes it look very natural. Now, this guy will be getting moved out soon. And then we're probably going to leave these two in here. Uh, I don't know. I got to figure out the arrangements. But stay tuned for that. That's something that you would not want to miss. So uh, also, let me point out up top. So if you have an arowana, you know, they like to jump. So I made sure that I screwed the lids down. Now, these are wood, y'all. And uh, the screws only go in probably, it just go in maybe like four or five threads down just so it's secure and our arowana cannot jump out. Down below, we have a 180-gallon aquarium. This is our Jardini. He's probably pushing about 14 inches. A real stunner, real stunner. Love that fish. Again, same setup. We got the big boulders. We got the river stones and river pebbles. We also have in here three different catfish, a sun cat, a spotted raffio cat, and I think that's it, two catfish. And then as well as a pleco. The pleco ensures that that's the spotted Raphael cat. Oh, and then we got the striped yeah. Raphael cat. Yeah. And then a sun cat. So I was right. We have three catfish in here. And um, so, yeah, the pleco assists with keeping the algae down in the aquariums. And again, this big aquarium is being filtered by two sponge filters. So as you can see, it's 100% possible to do such a thing. And again, same thing with the lid. Screw down. This is wood. I wouldn't suggest doing that if it was plastic or if it was, of course, not glass. You'd have to figure out another situation if it was glass. I could give you an idea of what you would be able to do, but not in this video. All right. Now, over here, we have our 300 gallon stock tank. And in here, we have. Miami. Miami is an extra large, that glare. Be careful. Miami is our, there we go, I'm trying to get it. This glare is terrible. Nonetheless, the OGs know who it is. If y'all don't know, this is our extra large Florida softshell turtle. 
She is indeed a female, and she is definitely a channel mascot. Is it? Are you? Are you able to get her? All right. Moving on up to the rack over here. Now. So moving on over to the rack over here, y'all. So I'm going to point out something. Something that's going to be very obvious with these aquariums. See, all of these tanks look very clear, crystal clear, in a matter of fact. But then you get to this one. This one has been giving me some problems since I set it up. I don't know why the algae loves this aquarium, but it does. It gets all over the glass and just makes it very, very, very problematic when it comes time to cleaning it. Now, we'll probably just remedy this situation with a pleco. But for now, you're about to get the real deal, y'all. Y'all about to get the real deal. So in this aquarium, it's a 40-gallon. Fake rock right there. Fake Dragonstone little cave. We got the real rock over here. We have in here our red betta. Call him Cheeto. That's right. We have some golden barbs right here. They all look very, very hungry. Thank you, babe. Look, she got, she hooked y'all up. Now y'all can see a little bit better. Got the golden barbs. Then we have three of these green glow corridors. And then we got some white cloud minnows. And then we grow on some pothos in the top. Leads on over to this aquarium right here where we have another male better. This is a half moon better. And then we have in here some red line neon tetras. We have two panda quarry cats down there. And then again, as you can see how the pothos just love growing in aquariums. Now, some of y'all probably wonder how, do, how well do pothos fare with being underwater? Well, take a look. They look extremely healthy to me, don't they? The roots grow down all the way to the substrate. I mean, this looks, I love this. And then as you can see, even over here, underwater, not just the top. So it works very well, works very well. Over here. We have in here a black crown tail male betta, as well as some dwarf rainbows. Now, those are so freaking cool right here. Um, I definitely want to grab some more of these. You see the shimmer in them? Red fins got like a, a pearl going on. You can see like some blues and some silvers. This baby look really nice. I don't think the camera is doing them any justice, but maybe if I turn this a little bit look at that y'all see some of those blues yeah then coming at them from the side that don't really help at all not at all now down below we have the old faithful right we got the cardinal tetris now those are amazing look at the blue and the red real stunners right match very well with our koi male benefits right here absolutely beautiful now this aquarium has no quarry cats in here and we will definitely remedy that now look at all the the roots that's growing from the pothos now some may like this some may not we definitely enjoy it i know the fish enjoy it it keeps the water quality extremely healthy and uh you know they get to venture and swim through all of those roots very natural, very, very natural. And we have grow lights that's assisting in growing all of these plants the way they're growing. Now, right here, the real OG better right here, we got mustard. And I have to acknowledge this fat African dwarf frog. I mean, he is, that, that's Kermit right here. He's chunky. Kermit and Geico. Where Geico at? He's somewhere here. Now, Geico is the uh, is the lizard. 
We got to come up with some names for these guys. Nah. But yeah, he's chunky. That's crazy. I never, I guess I don't really sit here and stare that often because I didn't realize he was the size of a, a quarter almost. But yeah, we got our mustard better right here. Oh, geez, remember him? He didn't travel around the house. We got our T-bone tetras in here. And then we have our rummy nose tetras in here as well. And then we have two Chinese albino algae eaters. They're not really albino, though. They're looking a little golden. Nonetheless, this aquarium is such a pleasure. Mustard is such a pleasure to own and keep. And I love being able to show you all how better fish make excellent community fish. If y'all didn't know, now you know. This tank has been set up with these inhabitants for quite a while. And come on out. There's number two. Chinese algae eater number two. And then we have one more African dwarf frog in here that I can't find. He's definitely somewhere in that corner. But look at the roots again. Look at the roots. Just so natural. And uh, they all love this. And as you can see, the water is absolutely crystal clear. Now, lastly, yeah, look, at the, look at the snails. Lastly, I want to show you a very natural um, aquarium that we have in this room. All right. So over here, we have a extremely natural aquarium going on right here. I have done no water changes on it, haven't cleaned a sponge filter or anything, and we have algae growing all over the glass, but the snails eat it. So I'm just letting this thing just go, just go. All of these are guppies. We have in here one little pea puffer right here. We have a ghost shrimp. Look at that. Beautiful guppy right there. So the idea is just leaving it alone. Leaving it alone. Now I can't pull out this little bit of algae. Sometimes I do pull out algae if it's like that clumped together. I will pull that. But all the pothos growing in there like crazy. Got the roots going all the way down to the rock work. Um, like I said, this is where we breed all of the snails. So I take the snails out. I move them to different aquariums. And overall, it just, you know, it's a real ecosystem, y'all. It's a real ecosystem. So, yeah, this has been like an experimental tank. You know, if it ever got to the point where I just, where I hated it, couldn't stand it, I would obviously do something about it. But I'm just letting it go. I mean, look at how clear that water is. Sometimes you don't have to do anything. This probably would be like a good example of a father fish aquarium you know but like i said just allow it to do its thing allow nature to do what it's supposed to do between the plants the algae it's removing the nitrates from the water like i said look at how healthy these guppies are and we have some beautiful guppies in here y'all we didn't add anything else in here we haven't put anything in here and almost probably a year and uh they just even that one that one was one of the uh, small small fry that grew out but yeah so that's what's going on with this aquarium let me know in the comments if you if you love it if you hate it what would you do different probably take off that algae keep you know just follow me on uh, on all of the platforms i definitely will keep you all updated on on this algae, I'll tell you right now that it's definitely thinning out. It was a, a carpet across the whole front. But now you can actually see little holes and things like that. Again, that's from the snails. If y'all y'all haven't seen this aviary, now you have. Oh, geez, know what's up. They probably been wondering what's going on with the birds. The birds are doing absolutely fine. We have in here, go ahead, man. <clears throat> we have in here some Lady Goldian finches. We have a blue one. We have uh, the gray face. 
we have the black face and then we have the red face. So two males, two females. Such a joy to keep. And um, just to add a, a different aesthetic to the fish room. Indoor, outdoor, bird aviary. But uh, that's it. That's it for this room. Just wanted to give you all a, a nice little update. Let y'all see how this room is looking. Give you guys some ideas. I drain. This is probably going to be one of the differences that I added to the room that the OGs might not be aware of. So I've always had trouble with draining, you know, these aquariums. So this is the drain line. So I take my pump, stick the, uh, the hose in that side, drain it right outside. I am going to bring water from the garage all the way to this room on the outside of the house. So that's going to make things easier. Instead of me dragging a hose all the way through the house, I could just cut on the water in the garage, turn on the, uh, the, the valve right here. We got water into this room. And again, like I said, this is how we drain it. Um, the little A portable AC unit right there keeps this room nice and cool. It feels absolutely amazing in here. Dehumidifier down below. It's a little thing. So I always say if you're going to have a fish room, think about how you So make sure when you consider having a fish room, you figure out how you're going to get water into those aquariums and how you're going to drain those aquariums. Just makes things easier. Anyway, I hope that you all, I hope that you all enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you're inspired by something. If you're new to the channel, do those three things for me. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. And what you got to do, if you like the video, like the damn video. Peace.